Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video. Today I am here with MJ or Geekless TV. Please say hello. Hello, thank you for having me. Damn, I, I love it. Straight to the point. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so what are we discussing here today, man? We are discussing why movie one of Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Z Dead Zone is an underrated film. I believe it is probably the most underrated film in the whole uh, pool of Dragon Ball movies because it's it's good, man. Like I find it's one of, it's my favorite movie. You know what I mean? So I don't know how you feel about that, but I feel like it's completely underrated. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I think um, I think we should start from the beginning and just tell you why it's so awesome and why it's so overlooked. Um, I think the um, the introduction to Dead Zone is the best introduction in any Dragon Ball movie because it literally starts with Goku getting beat to, I mean, not Goku, Piccolo be, be, like, getting beat the shit out of. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah, he gets jumped. Yeah, it's surprising. <laughs> um, it's, it's really cool in the fact that, like, some people, a lot of people complain that, like, oh, they don't get to the action straight away. Dead Zone does that. Um, it, it definitely does. Um, but yeah, what are some other reasons why you like it, MJ? Well, one of the other reasons is, and this is a simple reason, is that this movie is, like, really close to the actual timeline, and if you were not, like, you could actually just pop the Blu-ray in or the DVD, and, you know, you can just watch it right after Dragon Ball. Of course, there will be a few contemplations, but this is one of the few movies that the timeline just happens to fit perfectly in, you know? Of course, minor contemplations, but again, it is overall a good watch, and of course, we probably get to the most highlighted part and after the beatdown or the jumping of Piccolo and that's Goku's kid. We see Goku's kid get kidnapped. You know what I mean? We're introduced to his kid and he's kidnapped and that sets up the plot. And it's it's crazy to think that's like what happens. You know what I mean? Like we get a kidnapping in Dragon Ball. You know, we get to... It's just cool. I like... I like to see, like, the parenting of, like, uh, Chi-Chi and, you know, the Ox King and stuff like that, you know, Chi-Chi willing to fight for her uh, son and then Goku coming in, and I just felt that that was overall just, like, a cool way to start the movie, and I agree with you, you know, we get right into the action, they jump Piccolo, they kidnap Gohan, it, it makes these villains, bro, I feel like a threat, you know what I mean, like, I'm not gonna say any of the villains don't feel like a threat, any of the movie villains, but these are some of the first villains to actually feel like a legit threat to the dragon team you know what i mean yeah like at the time uh ox king and chi chi they could like hold their own like they're not the strongest in the world but they could you know they could do some uh stuff so them um getting beaten down uh by garlic jr's henchmen it was really like thrilling and i really enjoyed it um also, um, one scene in particular is really humorous is when um, Gohan eats the fruit and it, like, makes him drunk. It's like, that, that's a great scene and how it goes all into his world. That's kind of a cool um, comparison to Zenkai Power, the ending song, how, how he's just walking. The visuals are pretty damn similar. Um, I really like that scene as well. And overall, the movie's just really really underrated and i'm not sure why like it's paced well gets into the action straight away the music by kikuchi and even by mark menz is not bad it has a decent story you know what i mean it has an actual story and backstory to the villain you know and we know their goal straight away you know what i mean it's it's very weird like i don't know why it's so underrated but also this is uh what i liked about this film is that they also introduced the whole gohan's hidden power plot right away with garlic sensing how strong this kid is and like, he wants to recruit him you know what i mean like it just sets up like a good lore you know like we get some stuff on gohan we it, i don't know man this movie for me i have no idea why it's not ever mentioned like from the people i've talked to you know we from the people i've talked to like you know this is never mentioned like in their top five films and it's just very weird and you were talking about visuals earlier i know you were talking about the outro but actually going to the film the film's surroundings are great. Like, I love the area where Piccolo's training in. I love how Garlic's mansion actually looked. The Red Sea background, you know what I mean? Or the Crimson Sea. Like, I loved all that, you know? Like, that was cool. I like the visuals in this movie. It, it doesn't stand up to, like, movie 9, but it was still pretty good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's seriously, like, it's one of the best-looking Dragon Ball films just out of, like... J just um, out of backgrounds and stuff. Like, it's a fucking crime 
why like this isn't a stage in Xenoverse 2 but man it's like it, it looks so gorgeous and the dead zone itself like that that looks great that whole scene was well animated and stuff and overall the fighting is really uh concise there's a lot of character moments with krillin and piccolo when they jump in that's really cool it has a good uh it has a decent dub especially with the ocean dub with, yes uh, <laughs> uh, with scott mcneil as a uh, piccolo that like he's he's screaming in that movie and it's it's fantastic so the ocean and the funimation both have decent dubs the uh funimation dub came out in 2005 pretty good job um it still has a replacement score but that's that's all right whatever um but yeah this uh this movie is definitely uh one of the best in the series i think it's overlooked uh this is my personal theory it's because it's the first one and it's like many people like many people sort of um uh, describe dragon ball z as like people with like you know buffed up muscles and like super saiyan forms and stuff so they're going to watch the later movies but they sort of forget and miss out on you know gems like uh movie one movie three you know stuff like that Oh, I mean, Garlic Jr. can get as buff as any of them, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, I want to ask you your thoughts. Like, um, you think maybe it could be the fact that people who, this is me, like, thinking off the top of my head, maybe people just don't like this movie or they don't consider it a good movie because of what we got in Z, that filler arc. You think maybe people who grew up on the Z Tanabi dub probably got, like, a bad taste in their mouth and never went and watched this or something i just maybe that's something that has to do with it you know what i mean i don't know it, i just feel it's like really weird and i can't actually like pinpoint why this movie is underrated because think about it the, when we get towards the end not only do we have a villain who's immortal sorry zamasu he did it first <laughs> not only do we have a villain that's immortal and that's an actual threat you know what i mean Goku isn't the, the solo fighter. He isn't the solo hero. He needs Piccolo's help. You know what I mean? He needs Piccolo the tag team with him in order to, you know, beat this villain. And that's something that at the time, you know what I mean? Goku being the only hero that was kind of sidestep for Piccolo. And then, of course, Gohan is the one who actually saves the day at the end. You know what I mean? I just find it weird that this film is so overlooked, you know? I, I just don't know, like, where to pinpoint it and why it is, you know? But... Yeah, um, Gohan saving the day was actually really awesome as well. Um, it was something different at the time, and like in this, it, even in the fight against Raditz, like Gohan, um, you know, he he uh, damaged Raditz, but it was ultimately Goku and Piccolo that you know killed Raditz. But no, fucking Gohan, like he full on saves the day. Um, this was before. Uh, so the cell games shit. So yeah, um, he full Gohan on was... powers up and sends that guy into the dead zone. You know what I mean? It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Also, the dead zone is an awesome concept as well. It um, is, man. Like I said, this backstory, like the whole garlic Jr. Why he wants to be immortal? Why he wants like he he? This is actually a revenge story. You know what I mean? And he wants his revenge on uh, Kami, and he wants his revenge on the Earth. You know and. It's, it's just an overall cool movie. I know I keep like I'm, I keep dick sucking this movie right now, but <laughs> I'm just saying it's like this movie is just awesome, you know. And it boggles my mind why it isn't uh, appreciated or it doesn't get the recognition that most other movies do, like Battle of Gods, for example. You know, like people will say, yeah. "Oh, Battle of God, that is the number one best movie ever," by Dragon <laughs> Ball Z. When uh, I disagree, man, you know, <laughs> that's me, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, um, we could talk about this also, all day, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a, it's a yeah, it's a movie that like we can have a two hour conversation about the background <laughs> in this fucking movie, man. We, it's so we good, can go man. in depth on the whole Kami stuff and how it mixed in with Kami and the Piccolo. You know what I mean? And we can just go into depth on that, but you know, ugh. <laughs> yeah, time constraints, man. There's so many hours in a day. <laughs> But yeah, guys, I think that's uh, pretty much it. Please go subscribe to Geeklist TV, um, aka MJ, for some great Dragon Ball content. Seriously, this this guy's a machine when it comes to Dragon Ball content. Please go check him Thank out. You, and man. Your support. <laughs> no, 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 great, great content. But yeah, guys, uh, see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>